All right, so in this video, we're actually gonna write some SQL queries, finally. Um, I Thanks for your patience. We've had to sort of install everything and talk about Jupyter Notebooks and then talk about databases. And, and now we're finally going to dive into uh, the basic SQL statements and actually write some SQL in PG Admin. So let's dive into the slides and take a look at the high level overview of the syntax before we do that. Okay, so let's do that now. So here are the SQL statements, and we're gonna start with the select, which we've already talked about. And here you already know what this means. Basically select everything from film, and we talked about um, this being a better uh, sort of syntax. And you might be asking, well, why is that the case? We, we haven't talked about what star means yet. We, well, actually we, do, we have. We know that it, it'll get all of the columns or get everything. I've been saying it'll get everything. It's like a wild card. But what does that mean? Well, these are columns. So as your SQL queries grow, you might have one column that's this long, the name, and you have another column, and then you have another column, and then another column. Well, you'll run out of room. So let's go back to the previous slide. Well, if you try to do that here, you just wouldn't have room to, you know, to add all the different columns, right? So it kind of makes sense. Right now, that looks really nice and clean. However, when you're looking at this statement and your, your SQL queries get bigger and bigger and bigger, you're gonna need some more room. So this is the preferred best practice um, um, of syntax, okay? So let's move on to the next slide and talk a little bit about these columns. So you may not know what columns are inside <laughs> of each uh, table, right? So here I do know that there is a title for films. That makes sense, right? Every film has to have a title, but there's also gonna be a unique ID and other columns. So that's why we actually select everything so that you can actually see all the columns and see what you want to look at, right? What you, where you want to drill down. So select column from table. So that's what's happening here. So this is um, column. And this is the table that you want to select, right? And this will become very intuitive as you start to use this. And so this is the preferred uh, format syntax for that. And so let's go ahead and write some SQL. All right, so the first thing we need to do here is open the query tool. So I don't have the query tool open. Um, and to do that, you just right click on this database, which is the DVD rental database. And I'm going to open the query tool. I can't really see anything. So let me go ahead and open this up. I'm gonna go to schemas. And I'm going to go to tables, and then I can see all the tables. Let's say I wanted to drill down into the actor table and I wanted to see the columns. That's how you can see the columns. But you can also just use the select keyword and select everything. And we're going to say that we want to look at the actor table and then semicolon. Again, you don't need to use a semicolon, but it's a best practice to put it in there. Okay, so we run this and we can see that we have a first name and a last name. And notice how I'm clicking this and each one turns blue. When you're having, when you have a lot of columns and you want to keep in mind what you want to look at, maybe you're saying, okay, I'm going to deselect these. So I want the actor ID and the last update. Maybe that's all you want to look at. Well, you could do that here. So you would say actor underscore ID and then a comma for the next uh, column. And then you can say, last underscore update and let's go ahead and run this and then you get back only those two columns that you look that you were looking for and we talked about the distinct keyword that's going to come up next but let's go ahead and take a look at another do this one more time and let's take a look at um, we talked about film so that's going to be a bigger uh, table and so we have film id title and a lot of descriptions. So pretty long descriptions. If you scroll over, you'll see you have a bunch more columns. So release year, and here are the ratings that we were talking about before. Look at that, NC17, right? Um, it used to be T for teen. I think that maybe that's games or something like that. And there's also G, I forgot that there's a G rating. Anyway, we'll, we'll dive into this. Um, and finally, we have special features and full text. Okay, so we have a bunch of stuff here. So let's say um, I'm trying to figure out which title, which uh, columns I want. I could just say, just highlight them and then say, well, I want title 
and release year. So that's all. Let's try that. So title and release year. And let's run this. And there you go. So you get that really nice um, sort of return uh, statement using this SQL right here. And so this makes probably makes a lot more sense than using a star. And, and using the star, let me go ahead and add that, is, is very expensive. <laughs> and so what do I mean by expensive? Well, when you're thinking about an application that's running and it has to return information, grabbing everything, especially from a large data set, would take longer. And if you're working on an application that has many, many users, or you're in an organization that uses, uh, that has many, many uh, employees, it's going to slow things down for everybody. So you want to use efficient uh, queries. And so select star is not something that you would use often. However, it is useful if you've never seen the table and you want to look at it to see what columns are inside. That said, you can look here at the side, right? You can check out these column names by drilling down into the tables and then clicking on a column or, or a table and then clicking on columns and seeing what's available. All right, so I just wanted to kind of point that out. And again, if you didn't have this semicolon and you ran that, it would still work. And you could also, I think this is important to point out, you don't, they don't have to be uppercase and or have a semicolon and it will still work. However, if you're looking at this, it's not the best practice to, um, to have that. And the reason is, well, first of all, it looks too similar. So going back to this, you can see that there's a distinction between keywords and actual tables and columns and things that you're sort of looking into. So select what? Select um, title, right? So there's a distinction here and makes it easier to read. So let's do one more before we uh, move on to the next video. So let's say, um, let's do rating, title, and release here. And you see I'm changing the order here, right? Uh, I added rating first and rating is all the way over here somewhere. Yeah, all the way over there. So you can do that. So I'm gonna add the semicolon for best practice and let's run that and look at that. So you can change the order of the columns based on how you uh, sort of distribute this, right? So if I grabbed rating and added it to the very end like this, so look at it right now. It is rating title release here. And now we have, okay, so great. We got our first error. And so um, let's read this together. It does not exist. Yeah, because I misspelled year and there's no release, yeah. So it's release year. Let's run that again, it's spelled correctly. And then we get title, release year and rating. Whereas before rating was the first column. So just keep that in mind that you can sort this just by um, sort of order in the way, the order of, in, the, in which they appear, pretty much. All right, so that's it for the select statement and kind of the introduction in our first uh, session with the query tool. And the next video, we're gonna dive into the distinct keyword and kind of dive deeper into the general syntax. I hope this has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing.